One thing is for certain, Earth is one of the most magnificent planets in the entire cosmos. Here, summers are hot, winters are cold, and Mother Nature is infamous for throwing a few severe natural disasters at us sometimes. Earth, on the other hand, is a wonderful place to live, and more crucially, no other planet in the solar system is capable of assisting humanity in the same way Earth does. However, this hasn't stopped astronomers and scientists from looking for other worlds that potentially support life. We may not be able to pack our belongings and relocate to these worlds just yet, but there is nothing wrong in searching further deep into space. A group of academics just discovered till date not just one, but 24 planets that may support a civilization similar to ours. They even claimed that these worlds are superior to Earth. So what groundbreaking discoveries have these scientists made? What makes these worlds even more welcoming than our own? Hello inquisitive heads out there, welcome back to another mind-blowing episode. And today we are going to discuss our potential new home. So without wasting much time, let's start today's discussion. A team from Washington State University conducted the study. They discovered 24 planets beyond our solar system. Those are not only similar to Earth, but also superior to it in several ways. It's important to keep in mind that the researchers weren't hunting for life per se, but rather planets that potentially provide a suitable environment for it. Some of the planets on the list are larger, warmer, or even better than our own. Another possibility to make the list is to be a planet that orbits a star and has a lifespan longer than our sun. As you can see, when all of these factors are considered, the result is a planet that any human would be proud to call home. To compile this list, scientists devised a set of criteria for determining whether or not a planet is livable. A highly livable planet might support a civilization similar to ours, perhaps even better than Earth. So what factors contribute to a planet's habitability? What were the conditions that allowed life to flourish? Earth was used as a testbed for identifying whether planets may be classified as livable. Planets that are rocky and orbit inside the host star's habitable zone or the area surrounding the star that permits liquid water to exist were included in the list, despite the researchers' allowance for some wiggle space. Researchers were also seeking a Goldilocks zone, or a place that is neither too hot nor too cold, but just right after choosing Earth as their starting point. They began looking for a specific sort of star. Our Sun is classified as a G-type star. That means it's been around for 4.6 billion years and will continue to do so for another 5.6 billion. That may appear to be a very long time. However, in the larger scheme of things, several other styles stay much longer. For example, K-type stars are orange dwarf stars with a lifespan of between 20 to 70 billion years. A K-type star is significantly better for life since it allows organisms to develop and grow over a longer period. Although 10 million years is impressive, it pales in comparison to 70 years of activity. As a result, scientists began looking for worlds that may be better than Earth. They are on the lookout for stars that have the potential to last longer. Researchers were also looking for planets that were 5 to 8 billion years old and up to one and a half times the size of our own. When it comes to temperature, they allowed for a 5 degree range with a 30% oxygen environment. Of course, any livable planet would have plenty of lead and water. It will also be a significant step forward. This equates to 1 to 10% of the planet's size. The number of contenders began to dwindle as the researchers narrowed down what made a planet so unique. It's crucial to remember that the list of potentially livable planets began with the discovery of over 45,000 known exoplanets in the Milky Way. After all of the research and qualifications, it was whittled down to a group of only 24 planets, none of which checked off every box on the highly livable list. This is due to a lack of information regarding moon lands, plate tectonics, and other topics. Despite this, astronomers have discovered one stellar planet that they believe is the MVP, most valuable planet. So which planet has the fortunate distinction of being superior to Earth when it comes to being hospitable? What do you think? According to the researchers, KIC 9832379 is one such planet. The planet is around 1.8 times the size of Earth, and it has only been for 3.5 billion years. Oh, it circles the K-type star KOI 5715, which was identified by the Kepler Space Telescope in a star field within the Cygnus constellation. And based on all of the studies and the various qualities, the KIC 9832379 would most likely provide a wonderful home for any number of animals. 
In case you didn't know, the Kepler Space Telescope was launched by NASA in 2009 to discover Earth-sized planets orbiting other stars. The spacecraft was launched into an Earth-trailing heliocentric orbit and was named after astronomer Johannes Kepler. William J. Borutsky was the lead investigator. The telescope's reaction control system fuel was spent after nine and a half years of operation, and NASA announced its retirement on October 30, 2018. Kepler's sole scientific instrument was a photometer that continuously monitored the brightness of approximately 150,000 main sequence stars in a fixed field of view. Its goal was to explore to a region of the Milky Way similar to Earth's in order to find Earth-sized exoplanets in or near habitable zones and determine how many of the Milky Way's billions of stars have such planets. These data were sent to Earth, where they were evaluated to see if there was any periodic dimming caused by exoplanets passing in front of their home star. Only planets with edge-on orbits from Earth might be observed. Kepler discovered 2,662 planets and observed 530,506 stars. Its primary mirror is the largest mirror on any telescope outside of Earth orbit, with a field of view comparable to one fist held at arm's length and a 12-degree diameter. Instead of sharp photos, the photometer has a soft focus to produce superior photometry. In terms of photometric performance, Kepler performed admirably, far better than any Earth-bound telescope yet it fell short of its planned objectives. On a magnitude 12 star, the goal was a combined differential photometric precision CDPP of 20 parts per million for a 6.5 hour integration. This estimate was made with a stellar variability allowance of 10 ppm, which is about the same as the sun's. This observation's precision varies greatly depending on the star and its position on the focus plane, with a median of 29 ppm. The majority of the extra noise appears to be attributable to bigger-than-anticipated variability in the stars, with the remainder coming from instrumental noise sources that are slightly larger than expected. The Kepler telescope orbits the Sun, avoiding stray lights, Earth occultations, and gravitational disturbances and torques. Kepler's orbit is described by NASA as Earth trailing. Kepler's orbital period is 372.5 days, and he's falling behind Earth at a rate of around 16 million miles each year. The distance between Earth and Kepler was roughly 0 0.917 AU, 137 million kilometers, as of May 1, 2018. This indicates that Kepler will reach the other side of the Sun in around 26 years and will return to the Earth's neighborhood in 51 years. Until 2013, the photometer was pointing to a region in the northern constellations of Cygnus, Lyra, and Draco which is well out of the ecliptic plane and hence never receives sunlight while the spacecraft circles. This is also the direction in which the solar system orbits the galaxy's center. As a result, the stars observed by Kepler are nearly the same distance from the galactic center as the solar system, and they are likewise close to the galactic plane. This is significant if, as the rare Earth hypothesis suggests, habitability is tied to location in the galaxy. Sensing rotations using fine guidance sensors on the instrument focal plane stabilizes the orientation in three dimensions instead of rate sensing gyroscopes like as used on Hubble, controlling the orientation via reaction wheels and hydrazine thrusters. In the constellations of Cygnus, Lyra, and Draco Kepler, the photometer's field of view is stationary against the sky. The diagram on the right depicts celestial coordinates and the locations of the detective fields, as well as the positions of a few brilliant stars, with celestial north in the upper left corner. On the mission's website, you can use a calculator to see if an item is in the FOE and, if so, where it will appear in the photo detector output data stream. The Kepler follow-up program, or KFOP, receives data on exoplanet candidates and conducts follow-up observations. The field of vision of Kepler is 115 square degrees, or 0.25% of the sky, or roughly two scoops of the Big Dipper to cover the entire sky. Roughly 400 Kepler-like telescopes would be required. The constellations Cygnus, Lyra, and Draco are all represented in the Kepler field. The trinary star system, Gliese 1245, 15 light years from the Sun, is the nearest in Kepler's range of view. Vise J2000 plus 3629, a brown dwarf 22.8, one light years away from the Sun, is likewise in the field of view. But Kepler can't see it since it emits light predominantly in infrared wavelengths. Recently, this very telescope has discovered the planet KIC 9832379, which, according to scientists, might be considered as Earth 2.0.
However, because the recently discovered KIC 9832379 planet is 2.964 light years away from us, we'll never know for sure. What is the point of locating if there is no likelihood that we would ever visit this planet or others? If the research team and Washington State University were wasting their time, why did they bother? The truth is that this list was produced as a practice run for future powerful telescopes that will be built and available in the coming years. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which recently launched alongside the European Space Agency's Plato's Space Telescope, is the most well-known of these. And here is the Virtual Reality Space Observatory, which was created by Washington State University academics as a to-do list for these new telescopes. To put it another way, these were targets for them to focus on when they got up and running and pushed the limits of current telescopes. We shall learn more when the next space telescopes are launched. For years, people have worried about Earth 2.0, a world like ours, that may become our home. According to Dirk schultz mackage a geobiologist and professor at Washington State University who led the study, we'd have to travel somewhere if the worst happened. Unfortunately, that is unlikely to happen. While it's possible that we could terraform Mars or establish colonies on the moon, the chances of us discovering a planet that we can travel to are little to none. The researchers at Washington State University were well aware that they weren't seeking a place to call home for Earthlings. Instead, they wanted to demonstrate that being a specialist isn't the best location in the universe. Professor Dirk Schultz described it best when he remarked that we have a large number of sophisticated and diverse living forms, with many of them capable of surviving in harsh environments. It is beneficial to live a flexible lifestyle, but this does not imply that we have the best of everything. In reality, after the research on super hospitable planets was finished, Earth was ranked 25th from the bottom. So it's safe to declare that Earth is no longer the best planet in the cosmos. We now know of at least 24 more that could help you create a more comfortable and healthier environment. Unfortunately, none of them are within reach. The truth is that we still have a lot to learn about our cosmos. However, NASA's newest telescope, dubbed James Webb, is expected to gaze farther into the cosmos than we've ever seen before. Well, that's all for today, guys. Hope it was a pretty informative episode. Let us know your views about this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more episodes like this and ring the notification bell. See you in the next one. Peace.